Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk season finale, the Super Bowl happened today. And of course, myself, Omar Carmona, and Diamante Williams sit down for the Sunday Night Talk. Our thoughts on the game, our notes, our questions. Not to mention, we tackle the awards. We tackle a lot, a lot of subjects on this Super Bowl night. Did you watch it? Who am I kidding? Of course you did. Before we get to the episode, hey, if you like the Running It Back channel, if you like the shows on the channel, give it a subscribe right here on YouTube. The channel has grown. We picked up some new subscribers this week, and now we're off and running. So give it a subscribe if you haven't already. That's where I upload my interviews. That's where I upload my movie review podcast. And of course, this very episode today, the Sunday Night Talk. And I have some stand-up comedy shorts that are up there on the channel now and more are coming so give it a look give it a subscribe today on the show the super bowl happened the chiefs beat the eagles we discuss we're all here i'm in a party mode i talk about my sunday omar and diamante talk about their sunday we have a round of super bowl trivia and i discuss a very interesting phone call i had with my very own mother you're not going to want to miss this so here we go it is super bowl sunday Pretty much a national holiday. This is the Sunday Night Talk with myself, Omar Carmona, and Diamante Williams. The season finale is here. Go Super Bowl. Here we go. West Coast time. It is the season finale of the Sunday Night Talk. Omar Carmona joins me. Diamante Williams joins me. We're all here. The Super Bowl was today, and this is the final Sunday Night Talk. I am in party mode. I am ready to put a bow on this whole thing. Guys, the Super Bowl just ended, and my opening question, we watched the whole thing, commercials and all. My opening question is... Omar Carmona, how surprised are you by this result? The, I'm not. I'm not at all surprised by the Chiefs win. Uh, uh, Mahomes has. Um, I wouldn't want to say reestablished himself, but I think he because he never really went anywhere. Um, but I think he just had to make another announcement that he's the alpha in the NFL. He's still right him. It's, he is it's still all, him. He's the alpha. He's the alpha. And, and, and But hats off to Jalen Hurts. I did not think that Jalen Hurts was going to perform as well as he did. I mean, I think if, if there's any reason the Eagles lost, it wasn't from the quarterback position, okay? So I'm not surprised at the result. Uh, Patrick Holmes is king. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. He did give up the only turnover in the entire game. And I actually tweeted about it. I said, you know, look at uh, Hertz looking like Dak's little brother out there. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Yes, sir, you, go, you go too far with that nonsense. Diamante, right, how surprised are you by this? To, uh, you know what? I'm not surprised that Diamante would use like the opening segment to bring in the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it, D. How surprised uh, are you by this result? I'm not surprised either, just like Omar. Um, I, you know, I called the game a little bit more. I, I said they were going to win by, um, what, seven points? Um, yeah, I have mistaken. all of our predictions here. You, yeah. We all picked the Chiefs. Diamante, you yep. went, we're going to have to defend these these scores in a second, but Diamante, you went 42-38 Kansas City. Omar, you went 36-31 yep. Kansas City. I went 27-24 Kansas City. So we were all on the Chiefs' side. Yeah. I don't know if we all saw the Chiefs having to come back from being down 10 in the first half, but we all sort of deep down knew that the Chiefs were going to pull this off. It doesn't seem like any of us were that surprised. I would say I was surprised. If anything surprised me, it's the flip in the D in the Eagles defense in the second half. The fact that the Chiefs scored on every single possession in the second yeah. half was a big surprise. So here are my big takeaways after watching the game. I talked about the Eagles, first half D versus the second half. Catch controversies. It feels like we had three catch controversies inside mm. of seven plays all of a sudden. We had the Mahomes run. 
that big run on the last drive. We had the Philadelphia defensive penalty. And we had the Kansas City clock management to end the game on that kick. Were my big takeaways there. Well, and what a great play. What a great unselfish play uh, to go down. You are you are yeah. about to score a touchdown in the Super Bowl, okay? And for you to go down the good of the team, that was awesome. Yeah, he, he knew what was happening. Yeah. He knew what he needed to do. That was for the win. It speaks yep. to overall, like, watching this game. I think the Chiefs just outclassed the Eagles yeah. in the prepared. second half. They were prepared. The two touchdown passes Mahomes had in the flat were to two guys who could not have been more wide open. Yeah. The, the did, clock management. I mean, everything. Did you realize did. that? Sorry, Pat. Did you realize that that was the same play twice? They tried to run it a third time, but they, they ran it first with Kadarius Tony, the same play, right? He, he motioned in and then ran it out. And then they, they uh, played it, they reversed the field and ran it with their running back. The mm-hmm. same play uh, and, and, and scored twice, two touchdowns on that. I, I, I love that type of play calling. It, you saw something work. You saw their tendencies. Um, they, were, they were passing off the, uh, um, the person who, who, was, who was in motion. And, and, and they realized that. So they, they faked the motion and, and caught those guys slipping. Um, so I, I love the play call keep running it until they stop it. I love that attitude. I hate it when, 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 you know, offensive coordinators, they have, they, a play worked for them, but they never go back to it later on mm-hmm. in the game or anything. It's like, why would, why wouldn't you do that? You know, they want to be creative and call one play, one, uh, only, only call one play once a, what's a, um, a game. Now, now I love, I love that play call by the Chiefs. That's a better, yeah. that's a better an offensive coordinator and, and coach right there. And to like to speak to that, at the start of the second half, the Chiefs were pretty run heavy. It was it was kind of like, well, we'll still run it mainly off tackle until you stop us. They couldn't, and then Mahomes all of a sudden dropped back and like, oh, he can still move around, he can still throw. But yeah. it's not like Kelsey had a ton of catches in that second half. He, yeah, yeah. I think he had, I think he he had two, but like he was I thought they were just that a first step half. ahead of the Eagles all second half long. And then, like, credit to Jalen Hurts, he was very sharp, especially in that those first two drives. Right. Hurts. Like, last week, you heard me. I was, I was like, Jalen Hurts can't complete anything up the right sideline. Jalen Hurts mm-hmm. is sailing balls. Not in this game. Jalen Hurts had a play where he it's third and 14, and he rolls to his right. He's a right-handed quarterback. Or, sorry, he rolls to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback. And he throws a bullet, and he converts the third down. I was like, who is this Jalen Hurts? Right. Like, this guy is on fire. He's running it. The only thing that bumps me out is that he has no reaction no matter what happens. He scores a touchdown <laughs> and he's just like, uh, uh, uh. he has nothing in me. That's the only, but I, Jalen Hurts was, was phenomenal in this game. So that surprised me. Um, but all right, let's, let's talk to them about the meat of this game and then we'll go to our Super Bowl Sundays. Okay, the Philadelphia defensive holding penalty. Let me take you through the stats of it. It's, oh. thir- it's third and eight. It's a minute 48 left in the game. Philly still has one timeout left. If they stop them on that play, the Chiefs got to kick that field goal. So the Eagles are getting the ball back. First of all, let's start with it. Was that a penalty or not, Omar? By the black letter of the law? Yeah. Why is it got to be black? <laughs> that is a uh, um a coc call of color <laughs> by, by the letter of the Thank law you. that was a hold okay okay yep. but in that situation no. in that part of the field that's a flag you pick up if it's not a touchdown you pick it up if it was just like a for nothing for a no gainer but that was a touchdown that was the third time they ran that same type of wrinkle that i was just talking about that was the third play and he held on to him he didn't he didn't shift the guy or he didn't send somebody else acting like he was going to shift him he stayed on him and he held him from his break so yes you call that yeah because the guy he was getting beat like he realized he was getting beat beat and he got beat it wasn't the most blatant hold but it was 
a hole. It was a hole. So I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. I just don't like the way it happened. Like we've seen that, yeah. that exact play not get called. So yeah, if it's it, not for a touchdown, it's not getting called. Yeah. It was just for probably regular first down. They probably not, they're not calling that, but that was, they're they about to score a touchdown on that play. So Omar, are you more in the sense, like it would have been more interesting of a game if they hadn't called it? Like from, from the football fan perspective, yeah. From, a football, given the fan, from a football, a football fan, a fan perspective, you want Jalen Hurts to get the ball back and, and see what he can do, you know, and, and see if he can even answer Mahomes. But yeah, yeah, from a football perspective, yeah, you you hate that call. But you know, it, but it was a hold. I mean, I, no one can. I'm not saying it was not a hold. He clearly grabbed him and clearly spun him. Yeah. It yeah. Is, and, and I do. I just do hate having that. That obviously played a huge. What if? factor in the in the chiefs win um i just hate i just hate to say that a penalty was a huge factor in any win yeah it really was and if you want to if you want to shoot down the nfl conspiracy talk you use this play because if you want to have the greatest game you don't call that because i hate to say it as big as fun as this game was a little bit of the air gets let out of the balloon when they when Kansas City just goes into taking three knees and then kicking a field goal and the game's over. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that was, was like it was a from a fan's perspective, that was a painful final minute 40 to go through. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. that was it was just a weird way to end a great game. It was like, oh, okay, they got it. Philly, yeah, we'll let you score. No, we don't want to score. But we'll take a knee. Great. But like you said, it was still a great game. So I don't, I don't want the one penalty to, to stain the Super Bowl. Okay, it was still a great game, and 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 the Chiefs are are great champions. It makes me think that the NFL has got to do some sort of meeting or talk about how to circumnavigate teams doing this at the end of games now. Where it's like, yeah, we can the the defense will let us run in, but we don't want to run in. We'll just milk the clock. There's got to be something that can be done or something in the rules that these teams just don't, can't take three knees. No, but you know, but that, but, but I don't know what thing. you do, but that's no, I don't think that can be changed because you know, Hey, some, those were some dumbass timeouts that were used prior, you know, yeah. prior to that, mm -hmm. to that. And so, and I think, you know, uh, fuck around and find out, you know? And so yeah. when you mess with those timeouts like that and, and challenges like that, you know, you're going to, you're going to get burned. And I, I don't think any change needs to be made. What about you, D? Let down by the end of that game? No, was... not at all. That was, that was definitely, I mean, it, it's a hold. The biggest play, yes, it's the biggest play. Uh, there, it was kind of like an a anticlimactic type of ending, of course, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It, 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 was, it, was, it, was worth, it was worth the call, I feel. Yeah, I think in the Pantheon, say the Chiefs go on to become a dynasty, this Super Bowl win becomes, you know, third or fourth on their list because it just wasn't as dramatic as an end. They come the, the dramatic part was that first couple possessions of the third quarter when they come back and like Mahomes is coming back from his ankle, getting twisted again. I I think Ma, I know you can't give MVPs to inanimate objects, but how about giving the MVP to Mahomes' ankle? Somehow he has a <laughs> somehow he has a high ankle sprain that never goes in a boot. It's supposed to take four to six weeks to heal. He's fine. It gets twisted again. He is writhing in pain on the sidelines. Never goes into the locker room. Comes back. A guy, a, a guy like Mahomes is going to recognize that if you don't get back out there, guess what? You are going to be living uh, for the next uh, six months of hell. That 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 you did not make it back on there. Uh, out there with your teammates. So I never doubted Mahomes was gonna, you know, he it was he was gonna be it was gonna be a, a painful comeback. And obviously I think it helped him that he had to go to the, the halftime locker room right away after that play. But um, he didn't go to the locker room. He goes yeah, to the locker room with, with everybody else. Like you know, if it was yeah, more he waited serious. On the sideline. Yeah, no, he would have went you know, in. I'm saying he waited, I mean he went back to the locker room with his team, but he didn't yeah. have to wait long to get to the yeah. to the, get to the locker. It happened at the end of the the, the first yeah. half. Yeah. And it was a 30 minute uh, halftime anyways, but right. I, uh, Mahomes is guys, Mahomes is superhuman. Just he might be. Does know. I'm yeah. not, he's, I don't he's think super anyone, human. I don't think we can, we can argue that. I, yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think you need to argue that anymore. You know, it's mm -hmm. give the guy his props. I, like I said, he's, he's, the, he's the alpha right now. He's he, the alpha. He's like, 
like we talk about it like the guy we're always in he, we always feel like he's in the game I think we said that last week like you right. don't ever feel like you're ever out of the game when you have Mahomes on your team it's like that that's really like how you know that's how they felt with Jordan I'm not even playing Jordan like, Brady you know, Kobe yeah. like we like whenever you have that guy you're never just like, we're always in this game yeah, and I'm already saying it, Jordan. I'm comparing it to like his his sport. He's he's gonna be the greatest, guys. He has a he's real, be the real shot to take the take the torch. And yeah, and for and, us to be able to see two greats back to back like that, we're we're in the midst of watching a second great already. Yeah, we're gonna we're like we're a little fearful of living a life without Tom Brady, and yet we have someone to just keep steering the ship for us. Yeah, and also with like the Mahomes never being out of it, like. The Eagles had their number in that first half. Like, I didn't feel the Chiefs were out of it. And yeah. kudos to Greg Olson, who, like, I was very curious how this broadcast was going to go. And Greg Olson says, right, I was like, you know, the 49er game, they they won. The Super Bowl, they won. They were down 10 in the fourth yeah. quarter. Like, he was kind of right. like, no, nah, 10 points is no problem for the Chiefs. Yeah. It could have been, it could have been more, too. They went, so, they went out of that first, out of that, that, that halftime speech. They went on a 21 to three run. So they weren't, you know, mm -hmm. they, they definitely they made some adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't believe that. Cause I, I did feel like at the beginning, I was like, fuck the chiefs defense can't stop the Eagles. I, I felt like that for a couple of possessions. I was like, this yeah. is going to be a problem. Yeah. Um, I, I said after out. the first two possessions where they yeah. each go down the field and score a touchdown, I was like, all right, let's see, yeah. let's see who cracks at this pace first. They yeah. can't just keep going down the field like this. And, and it was it was the Chiefs in the first half, and it was the Eagles in the second half. So yeah, it, and it they was talked a, about the sorry they talked about the the Eagles being a first half team, not a second half team. Uh, they've lost a lot of games where they've gotten up big. Uh, not they haven't lost a lot of games; they only lost three games. I apologize for saying it that way, but they've been known to be contested in that second half. You know, uh, where um, the offense isn't is is, um, I guess. Uh, the offense, they figure out how to stop the offense um, and, and, and the second half. And, and so they don't produce any points. So it's just basically the defense having to stop the other team's offense. And, and they just couldn't do it today. They just yeah. couldn't do it. With that. that was the greatest player out there playing. They went on a run. That was right. a serious Yeah, run. if we put this in basketball terms, like they would have went like on a 20 to four run. Yeah. Darius Tony. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, did what do you, you see? Feel? So, but, sorry, before you say that, uh, did you see? I should have tagged you, but OJ Simpson said on his post, "Did you see it today?" Yeah, no. he posted this morning. He had his his Chiefs jersey on, and he literally <laughs> said in his little two minute speech that the the game changer was going to be Kadarius Tony today. He said that hmm. on his video. If you want to go there right now, oh, and wow. it was true. Wow, yep, o it was so true. OJ OJ predicts the future. <laughs> hello hello don't Twitter look at world. that i'm serious i'll send it to you guys <laughs> it's yours truly oj simpson I, I got a segment idea for next year it's called uh yours truly and we do an oj rant for the day <laughs> i think i think we can pull that off uh me and omar carmona what do you think man i think let's do it searching searching for ron goldman on oh the there we go <laughs> the, the search continues i will i will search uh at every golf course in the nation for the killer uh, okay, here's my thought, Omar, going into this game. I was really happy that we had these two teams, 13, two 13 and three teams. I really Great. felt like we had, we had a Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns matchup on our hands. Like these, we got the best matchup of the year. These were the two great teams of the year. So I really felt like, oh, we've got some heavyweights. This is going to be a great matchup. Did you feel like one team had it uh, grossly over another going into this game? Because the line moved back and forth by a point and a half all week long. Did you feel one team was overly favored than another? No, I, I, I didn't. Um, I, I, I thought it was going to be, I didn't think it was going to be a blowout from either side. Um, but gosh, hope Mahomes, again, Mahomes is something else. I, I we can't say enough. And then yep. b before we recap our Sundays, the one, the thing that stuck out to me and I got a little worried mid third quarter, like, just how many catches can we review in this game? I think we reviewed, I think they were all Eagles catches. But the weird one to me was that catch and fumble where the Casey guy did the scoop and score yeah. for the touchdown. I'm 
totally convinced that was a catch and fumble. He what did you the, think watching it? He didn't take the third. He didn't take the Des Bryant third step. Is what I think. I thought he moved. So, he moved his body and shoulders forward, and that would have constituted yeah. a football move. But you were waiting nope. for the step. The third step. The Des Bryant third step. That, that you know. You know, Des Bryant took three steps and scored almost. Yeah, and and it wasn't a call to catch then, but that's what they're looking for now. Yeah, he didn't do that. He just barely caught the ball, turned around, and boom, got blown up. So there wasn't there wasn't an extra football move there. Right. See, I thought the turnaround right. was the football move. No. Also, yeah, I am. There's got to be an extra one. Yeah. There's got to be an extra. Okay. Now uh, this is this is why I think we are never going to settle a catch argument. We are we have wait. We're too in the deep water now. Here's my yeah. new theory for the catch. If I'm going to rewrite it. Pretend the defensive back that blew you up was never born. What would happen? <laughs> now that's how I that's how I determine the catch. What if what if his his embryo never was fertilized, and he was never born? Would he have caught it? Just pure eye test. This is the other one I like is when the announcers and Evely will say like, I don't know if there's enough to overturn it because you know you got to go with the call on the field. I'm like, yeah, but what if the call on the field was shitty? You can't just default to whatever was called on the field. That's why we're back to my replay hostage idea where we keep the, the official in mm -hmm. an eight by eight room in the dark with a bag over his head. And when we need to review a play, we say, come on out. He has no idea what the call in the field was. He has no idea what the score was. And he just has to call it carte blanche. And then he goes back to the, the hostage cell for the rest of the game. That's the only way I think we can settle this because I, I think it's going to ruin our lives between now and to our death. Omar, so you're in agreement? You say it was an incomplete also? It was an incomplete pass. No, oh, all right. I'm in the I'm in the minority yeah. then. I thought it was a a catch, two feet and a and a move forward and then he got hit and fumbled it. One one interesting play was the Devonte Smith catch that was ruled not a catch the That was another play. one too. Yeah. yeah. But and and I would have argued that he established possession enough and that by the time he uh, his knee hit the the sideline, then the plays it was over. I mean, that so regardless catch. regardless yeah. if he if he dropped it or bobbled it at that point, it was over. I I I I just yeah. or, or you have to come down to the ground. There's if you're going down to the ground, you have to keep possession. I but Omar that. saying he had but, the third foot down already. But I'm Got saying you. that he had the possession already. Yes. Yeah. And, and by the time he's out, then the play's over. So regardless, I'm, I'm with you. That was difficult. That, yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever you're, happens you're right. to that ball after it, it's irregardless. I was, I was surprised or may, and, and, and you know, maybe I have to see it again. Yeah, that was, that was another one. Then there was the one by the tight end where he caught it and then re caught it that we yeah. looked at a few that was times a catch. over. That was a catch. That was a, catch. That that was was a, a little catch. clear. Yeah, that was a catch. All right. Well, let's go to our Sundays before we get into the awards and such you know super bowl sunday is such an important day me and omar i don't know if you remember this i think you and i in the third grade posed the idea of the monday after the super bowl being a national holiday we've so, been for years so <laughs> we had that idea in the third grade to have monday as a federal <laughs> holiday after the super bowl were you so guys wearing your uh your uh, 49er uh, raiders yeah. suits yeah yeah that was probably of the Talk era where we... and, and i want to say you know i i I think I think let's what what's the one if we got to give back a holiday, mm. which holiday <laughs> should we give back? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in order to get the day after Super Bowl, Cesar uh, Chavez Day. Oh, you know Martin Luther King. <laughs> just just kill it. Oh wait, are we gonna record yet? <laughs> I, I, I don't like the idea of Labor Day. Let's. I mean, everyone's blowing <laughs> off. Everyone's blowing what's, off that. What about Memorial Day? That's the same. Yeah, those seem to be like repetitive. Almost what if we switch thing. one? Yeah. Or just put Memorial Day on the Monday or, after the Super Bowl. Or, or why can't we just add one? Why do we have to take something away? No, he, yeah. it's it's it's, a, it's the cancel culture we live in, Diamante. <laughs> <laughs> just it add took, it in, you know. It, it took us 19 weeks to get here to cut cancel culture, <laughs> but we did it. Uh, there's a couple of ways to watch the Super Bowl. And it seems more and more my friends now, like I do this too, is like, I just like to watch it in my own house with my own food, with my own notepad to like watch it and take all my notes. But the Super Bowl party, people do it and you don't inevitably end up watching the game with the Super Bowl party. And then I thought, what if one day 
my Raiders make the Super Bowl. I don't even know if I could watch the game. I really don't. I think I would record it and watch it later. So, like, Omar, you've experienced this. How did you watch your 49ers in the Super Bowl? Is that just a stressful day for you? No, I, I still watched the game. You know, I, that way, you know, I didn't have much heartburn. How can you have heartburn with the Eagles beating the Niners the way they beat them? I mean, they, we had no chance with the injury, so I didn't have But well, what about the Super Bowl ones? The, the years of the Niners in the Super Bowl. How did oh, you? Nobody, nobody cares about your shitty game last week, fucking Omar. <laughs> <laughs> that next, uh next question all right i i opened up a sore spot all right d you've never experienced a dallas cowboy super bowl you have but you're what do you a mean kid. i'm a, i'm 40 years old man all three of them I, I i remember yeah but you were a kid i'm saying now as an adult where you That's have true. the choice of how to watch the super bowl if the cowboys got in the super bowl how would you do it are there any would there be nerves would there be just pure celebration? Would the would the idea of losing the Super Bowl creep in the back of your head? Because it would for every, me. Yeah, every time I watch the Cowboys, my my uh, my Apple iWatch always tells me my heart's beating too fast for it's been beating so fast for over ten minutes. You got you mm -hmm. got and you're not working out, <laughs> ah. so it'd be stressful. <laughs> would you watch it by yourself? Hey, no, nah, we got to have a party with. Cowboys fans or all fans? Anybody, all fans. You're, oh, okay. You, you know, I think everybody's a Cowboys fan at the end of the day. Oh, they really? enjoy watching them. Yeah, if you enjoy watching them, they, you're a Cowboys fan. Doesn't matter if you, you like that they lose, you're still watching them. Okay. All right, that's not bad. I have experienced a, a Raiders Super Bowl loss, and yeah, it, it's a tough feeling. It's a tough feeling. Luckily, I watched it by myself in my okay. dorm room that one year. So... I think I would what have year watched was it. That? Uh, 2002? 2003. 2002? 2002? Yeah, 2000, yeah, 2002, 2003 season. Yeah. I believe mm -hmm. they lost to the Bucks, And then, like, I think they're yep. getting blown out at one point. They cut it to, like, three touchdowns. And then all of a sudden, I get a barrage of phone calls. Like, they're still in it. Just trying to cheer me up slash check in on me. Is that so, when Gruden went to Tampa Bay yeah. the very next year? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. That's the Gruden one. <laughs> that's the uh, Barrett Robbins goes MIA one. That's the uh, Rich Gannon throws a million interceptions one. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh wait, beyond that, I don't really remember the game. Yes, that was that was that year. So let me tell you about not only my Sunday but like my week leading up to the game. Um, this is what surprised me. I called my dad to like, hey, let's talk a little football and uh, see what his thoughts are for the game. What's he going to do? Doesn't answer the call, so I uh, leave a message. Like, you know, three days goes by. Then my mom calls me, and I, I, I think I talk more football with my mom than my dad <laughs> at this point. My <laughs> mom knows like three stories. Awesome. My mom knows like three storylines going into the game. She's like, what about the Kelsey brothers? When's the last time two quarterbacks like this were in the game? And she's like talking like all these details about it. Now that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is every time I talk to my mom on the phone, it's like my mom is in a construction zone while she's on the phone. <laughs> it's like banging, there's hammering going on. There is like, uh, it sounds like a saw. She's like loading dishwashers. And I'm like, what's going on over there? And she's like, what, you can hear that? I'm like, yes, I can hear that, of course. And she's like, hold on, let me turn it down. Somehow it gets louder. When, when she's talking, it's impossible to have a conversation with my mom because there's just a million things going on. Right. She's like in a construction zone. I don't know what your conversations are like with your parents, but I'm like, what's mom, what are you, where are you? Where are you right now? It sounded like, it sounded like she was in a wind tunnel at one point or she was outside or going outside. It's insane. It's, it's always insanity with my mom. So um, hold tight. I, I think I recorded some of it too. Hold on, let me let me see here. Oh wait, there we go. This is what it's like talking to my mom. <laughs> that's that's the background going on in my mom. So there's a lot there's a lot going on back there. Yeah, I thought I'd play a little game. Um, Omar, why don't you be me, and I'm gonna be my mom. Oh wow, right? okay. So, so all right, so uh, you're gonna call me. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and you're going to ask me about my week. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, give me, uh, I'm going to give you a couple rings. Here you go. You go. Ring, 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 ring. 
Well, I mean, I'm, I've got, I got to act like I'm doing something. Okay. No, I'm, I'm my mom. You're me. Okay. Okay. So I'll uh, ring, ring. Yeah. Hello. Hello, son. Hey mom. Um, what are you doing? Oh, Hey son. You know, it was, um, I was just, um, thinking about the Super Bowl. I was thinking about you. It was so nice to see you the other day. Oh wait, hold on. Hold on. Someone's. Oh wait, hold There we go. Hold on. Can you still oh. hear me? Uh, mom, I can't hear you. What? Mom, mom are you there? Yeah, yeah, hold on, let me, let me turn, let me turn up. Okay, hold on, I'm back, I'm back. Okay, can you hear me? All right, yeah, can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, what are you gonna do for the Super Bowl, son? It's such a great game coming up. Well, you know, I was planning on... Uh... Really? I gotta go. What? Let's just, let's just talk later. What do you think about Kansas City, Mahomes? Is... Mahomes is really good, right? Hold on, let me... Is that a dog? Okay, hold on. You're clear now. Go ahead, son. Was that a dog? Uh, yeah, th yeah. We got a new dog. We got a new dog. Yeah. So, uh, so what's going on with you? How's uh, how's the weather there? Like, what are you gonna have for the Super Bowl? Well, you know, I was getting some wings. What? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna go the dishwasher. Oh, they got an ice cream truck. The nice thing truck down the street. I'm just gonna flag them down. Oh yeah, I got him. Snorting some cocaine. Oh, that's great. Oh. I've heard about that. Who's who? You're not hanging out with that Omar guy again, are you, son? <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, yeah. Well, you know, I'm just gonna talk to my Nate, my friend, and you know, we're all gonna go over to her house, and we're probably gonna, you know, we're gonna have a few drinks. Oh wait, hold. Yeah, okay, hold on. I turned it down. Can you hear me now, son? Yeah. Oh, someone's at my door. Where, where was she hanging out in the lower valley or what? A fucking ice cream truck or so? Sorry. Who's that? Who's that other person on the line? Is that Yamate? Sounds, sounds familiar. Oh, my. I haven't talked to Yamate in so long. Oh, right, hold on. There's got some, some other music being played. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll just call you back, son. How about that? That's that. We're good. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. That was a conversation with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. That was how it sounded <laughs> talking with my mom. And then she's oblivious to when I say like, what's going on? Another? She's like, what are you talking about? You can hear that. So <laughs> how do you think, how do you think Greg Olson and Kevin Burkhart did? This is called hard transitions portion of the show. How did you feel the announcing was, D? Because this was a, a year that I was like, are these guys really going to call the Super Bowl? I don't know if... No, it, 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 oh, I D answered that, but I thought I thought it was bland. I mean, it was, it was bland. Bland. I, bland. I, thought, I thought he's been bland. I, I couldn't believe they gave Fox the Super Bowl after knowing that they lost Troy, uh, Troy Buck. Uh, Troy, excuse me, Troy Aikman and, and uh, Joe Buck. I can't believe they let their second place team take that. Um, yeah, that was the interesting part. I was like, they was didn't really. It's almost like they went a year without like a really eight list, a list or starting quarterback. Yeah. Like it's one of those teams where they did quarterback by committee. That being said, I thought it was almost a throwback to the Madden Summerall type of broadcasting, where it's it's less words. Yeah, and I thought Olsen had great perspective, and I thought Burkhardt set him up really well for a lot of things. It was just different, but. I would say they brought it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they were very, but we, you're right. You're we right. don't have that relationship yet with them. Mm -hmm. No. Were you surprised that we didn't see Tom Brady in any way, shape or form pop up in the broadcast? I was hoping he would. I'm glad. Glad yeah. you don't like Tom Brady now. Oh, I do. But <laughs> let's let, let that, that guy, I mean, enough's enough. And he'll, he'll have enough. His time. Omar's had enough of Tom Brady. He'll have he'll have his time in, in the in the in the uh, booth in, in in a couple of years. Let, let let him rest. Yeah, give him a little like cool down time. Are you Omar, convinced? Omar's he... heard of, Omar's heard about him for the last twenty years. Give him a little bit, Pat. <laughs> Are you convinced that he's retired? I can't believe we're having this conversation on the night of the. <laughs> what? He's a major storyline. You don't you don't think it's worth talking about if. Tom Brady's we really retired this, or not? We just had the Super Bowl and Pat wants to talk about Tom Brady. I want to know if you think he's retired for good. I haven't even started on Aaron Rodgers, Omar. So <laughs> save your save your steam. <laughs> he's done. He's done though. Omar's he's done. done. Omar, Omar's checked out of this pod. 
Just 19, like Tom Brady. 19 weeks in. He's done. He's had enough. Uh, all right. Unless you have any other thoughts on the game itself. Oh, I have a couple pre-Super Bowl thoughts. Um, I thought the – here's a couple of words I would use to describe this Super Bowl. Strategic, steady, subdued, and well-planned. I don't feel like the Super Bowl ever got to like a high high. I feel like it maintained a pretty high level and stayed there. And even the <clears throat> national anthem was Chris Stapleton was like a yeah. real throwback, chilled out national anthem that I really liked. And then I thought it was hey, maybe maybe that, a red flag that Nick Sirianni's crying his eyes out during the, that, yeah. during the that, national that, anthem. That national anthem is top five Super Bowl. Really, oh. you liked it. Top five. I liked it too. There was no backing, just the electric guitar, like almost a twang. To it's very, it. it was very folksy, very uh, yes. traditional, and I, I appreciated it. I I liked the the Babyface America the Beautiful right before it as well. It was really good. Man, how old does Babyface look now? <laughs> he how, looked like an old man out there. Yeah. So you're saying he needs to change his name to Middle Age Face? Yes. Mm. He's Babyface is. What is he? He's got to be pushing uh, at least 50. No, like 60. Oh, my God. God. We, we figured yeah. he's mid 50s. He's mid 50s at least. Wow. Yeah. Look, look him up in the research department. Babyface. You really got to think your nicknames, recording artists, when you, when you, name, when you start a career because <laughs> he's, how... he's 64. Oh, 64. my God. Yep. Jesus. Forget middle age face. He's about to turn 65 uh, in April. So, wow. Oh like my I God. said, he's, he's, he's up there. Not Maybe. up there, up there. But he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's up there. Well, it's a testament to him how long he's lasted. But Yeah, maybe so. Maybe he's got the same whatever is in Mahomes' ankle in his blood. My last thought. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have two thoughts. <laughs> one, one that might piss off Diamante. Uh, did you catch that Terry Bradshaw straight up asked Andy Reid if he's going to retire during during the trophy ceremony? What happened? Omar's choking. Omar's <laughs> left the pod. What happened? Was for for people just listening to this, Omar's left the screen. His face is red. Now he's back. What what happened there? What's Terry Bradshaw thinking? That was odd. He he has to answer. He has to ask the the hard questions. You know, they ask the senile man to ask the the, the the tough questions and he went out there and did it he executed it yeah he did that was that was odd andy reed kind of shot it right back at him did you catch the andy reed with tom rinaldi post win interview where he where he threatens to kiss tom rinaldi no you didn't hear this where he's like Take us through the win, Andy Reid. He's like, I'm just so happy for the team. I could kiss you right now. And they both start laughing. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Andy Reid was feeling himself at the end of that Super Bowl. And then Tom Rinaldi kind of, they, they both laugh it off. I was like, whoa, Andy Reid. He went full like a page from Travis Kelsey's post-game interview style there. And then here's the part you, that, Andy Reid. <laughs> here's the part that might, that might upset Diamante. The last play of the game. Philadelphia Eagles have to throw a Hail Mary and just hope for the best. Should the Philadelphia Eagles have done the Zeke Elliott, take the center and snap the ball to your quarterback play? No one should ever do the Dallas <laughs> Hold on, hold play. on, hold on. Did you see that duck that <laughs> what happened? Hurts threw? That Something yeah, absolutely, absolutely. They would have got more yards than what, what he threw. He <laughs> That's throw true. A, a little 15-yard little duck. <laughs> He, that ball had to either, like, footing was a big deal in this game. So maybe Jalen Hurts slipped. Maybe the ball slipped out of his hands. What do maybe you there was the aliens question. involved. Here's, here's the question. That couldn't have been with, the throw. With, here's the question. With eight seconds left, was it eight seconds left or 11? It, it was I think it was, eight seconds. I think it was eight. It, they were down to one play. Eight, yeah. eight seconds left. Would you get down as quick as possible the way I thought the, the returner did? Or do you have a return play set up? Oh, I think you right. have a return play set up. You have to. That's going to be the only biggest. What are you counting on the 70 yard Hail Mary? Yeah, you right. can't Hail throw Hail it Mary? 70 yards. That's your only chance to actually run a play. So run the play. Should've yeah, set and, it's up. Already, and it's already unconventional mm -hmm. for both teams. So it's already unconventional. I, I, 
Yeah, I think with I think with the defense, you get a much better personnel in there if you're the defense, you know, and 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 rather than the the kickoff team, because you have to have a kicker, you know, that's one yep. that's one useless position. I mean, if you're looking at it, let's go 10 on 11. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's so interesting. I, I think, yeah, Diamante, I'm with you. I, I don't think you want to, uh, you know, do maybe, you know, five yards, go down and hope for a 70 yard uh, Hail Mary. I think you want to have a play that you've worked on throughout the year for this very situation yep. on a return, on a return. Here's a, mm-hmm. here's a wild idea along those lines. The last drive where the, or Kansas city's going down methodically against the Eagles defense. Once you realize the writing on the walls that, that the chiefs are going in, why not just go crazy all out blitzes on every play? And if the chiefs burn you great, you have more time on the offensive side. Remember that Super Bowl where the Eagles against the Patriots went just rammed it down the Patriots' throat for eight straight minutes, leaving them no time on the clock? Like, why not, like, just on defense, just try and sack them, throw an all-out blitz, and if they burn you on the first or or second play of the offense, great, you get the ball back, and you can try and tie it. Because they just, they killed them. They choked them out on offense there, the Chiefs said, that last, that last offensive series. So a couple things to like, they would look out post game just like, Hey, why don't we just say uh fuck it and uh, try and blitz Mahomes with, <laughs> with all 11 players. Right. Man, he's so good, man. He, he didn't get sacked once. And they, they, the Eagles were the leading um, sacking team in, Dude, in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And they, they didn't were, get they to him the one top, time. They were the top three of all time. And the top two were back to back. 84 85 bears the greatest defense we've ever seen yeah, so ever. that's got to tell you the company they were in yep and they Eagles had four had a great guys season. they had four guys that had over 10 sacks each never four been guys. done before never been had done a before. great great season i forget that this is hurts second year too this is third oh third sorry second year as a starter is that right yes he backed up Wentz one year Ah, right. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Final Eagles thought. Um, you know, we were praising San Francisco for the uh, the trade deadline, making great moves despite having different quarterbacks all year. What about the Eagles? They were two years removed from yeah. the Super Bowl, and they were like, Wentz is not the guy. Doug Peterson is not the guy. Let's get rid of them both. Let's bring in Hurts. Let's bring in Sirianni. And they turned it around within a short amount of time, and they had the best team in the league, and they go to the Super Bowl. Maybe some um, general management yeah. awards go to the Eagles for that turnaround. Let me, yeah, let me tell you one thing they did get wrong, though. Uh, they got the Doug Peterson thing got wrong. Yeah, they just they had did. the wrong quarterback. Yeah, um, that, that, yeah. That, that, the, the, the faith they had in Wentz was just yeah. so it was and then it lasted just way too long mm-hmm. uh, they really that franchise really dropped the ball with that with that draft yep yep they, they they drafted the wrong the wrong um and they they fired the wrong person so um i think they would be they would have been doing this with peterson um sirianni i don't think he uh, he's some like you know second coming of anything just yet because this this franchise had just won a Super Bowl recently. So um the Eagles are doing their thing. I, I think the GM is 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 handling his business with with acquiring. Uh, and, and think about it, the last couple of uh um um people uh, teams in the Super Bowl, they've gone all out in, in free agency and 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 on the trade deadline. Um the Rams did it last year and and the Eagles kind of <laughs> threw it all out there. And what's scary about the Eagles They've got this really good offense, and they still have a whole bunch of first-round draft picks over the next couple of years, right? Because of trades, so they're going to be there. The trade line is becoming so huge in the NFL. Like we yeah. saw it, like with other sports in the NBA this week, with like forty-nine players are involved yeah. in total NBA trades this last week, and we see in the NFL with McCaffrey getting acquired, Odell Beckham the year before. Yeah. Um, just got to make moves within the season, and then it can pay big, big dividends we saw it this year so uh, i i give the how Eagles big is that point. trade for aj brown sorry uh sorry right. about that Pat, but they they traded him on draft day mm-hmm. uh that the titans did i think that was a big mess up by the titans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, aj brown's a stud he is trivia i got some super bowl trivia for you guys before we go to the awards 
you guys can team up on this one because these are tough questions. I got five of them. So Super Bowl trivia, we've t- taken in the whole season, the whole Super Bowl. Let's test your knowledge on this one. Question number one. What team has played in four Super Bowls and never had the lead? Is that Buffalo? I am going to say no. They have they 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 did have a lead. I think I they so. led in the I think they led in the Giants. The uh, Giants one. Um, I, I want to say it's the Vikings. Four. Hold on, hold on, PAT. Give me um. Give me the Bengals. The correct answer is the Minnesota Vikings. Wow. Omar, you are correct. The Bills have led in two Super Bowls, at least, to my knowledge. Because remember, the Giants won. They they lose 20 to 19. Yeah. Um, and in the Dallas one, they scored the first touchdown in that game. And then they were ahead at halftime in the second Dallas one, too. So Minnesota Vikings, um, yeah, have never held the lead ever in their four Super Bowl appearances. I was only I was just thinking about which teams haven't won a Super Bowl. Oh yeah. That's that's been that's been there a while. So I didn't think about the Vikings. Uh all right. Next question. Put your heads together. What two teams have won the most Super Bowls? Come on now. The Patriots and the the Patriots. Steelers. Steelers. All right, you got it. You're both right. They each have Mm -hmm. six. Six Super Bowls. Next question, Super Bowl trivia. What four teams have never been to a Super Bowl? There's a whole bunch of, oh, four teams that have never been. Lions, Texans, yep. Jaguars, Browns. All right, you got it. Omar on the money. Didn't have to think about that one. That's pretty good. Who won the Super Bowl the year of the infamous wardrobe malfunction? Oh, shit. I think that wasn't, oh, uh, I could be wrong. Wasn't that a Patriots Super Bowl? Oh, no, no, I, I don't, shit. That's a great question. Is that a Patriots Panthers? I, I was going to say Patriots Panthers as well. I think that's, I'm pretty sure it's Patriots Panthers. Okay, are you in agreement? Both of you yes, are in we're agreement. In agreement. Yeah, Patriots we're in, Panthers. Yeah, we're in agreement. Okay, you your agreement is correct. The Patriots won the year. Of the mm-hmm. wardrobe malfunction, who performed? Was that in the this? Super was that it? Was that game? It was the Patriots yeah. Panthers. It yeah. was in yeah. Houston. That game was yeah. in yeah, Houston. It was the Houston. That was a Houston one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who performed the Super Bowl halftime show during the Super Bowl that had the blackout? That was, was San Francisco. The, 40, the 49ers and Baltimore Ravens in the in 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 New Orleans. Who was the New Orleans? Wait, what year? What year was this? That that was. It would have been. It would have been uh, uh, February of two thousand and thirteen. Pat, you got me there. I don't uh, know. That, you know, it was. It was not Purple Rain, is it? It wasn't a. Uh, no, um, no. Was Purple Prince, Rain was, was played. Purple Rain was played outdoors. It was raining during the Bears. Uh, oh, okay, okay, mm. yeah. Think. I just love hearing you two guys talk this out in your heads with each other. So I'm trying to uh, think New Orleans. I'm New trying Orleans. to think if that has any if that has any connection, the actual city, mm-hmm. if it has what? any connection to anyone. But I wanna I wanna say I don't know. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, come on, give me a guess. You gotta get a muster up a guess a here. Guess, come on, D, what I do guess, you got? Guess. I don't know. I don't think Taylor Swift hasn't done anything in the no, Super Bowl. No, she has not. Was it, you know, was uh, it what, 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 was it Beyonce? It could have been I wanna, Beyonce. I want to go, go Beyonce. Just, yeah, I just, go Beyonce. That's a good, that's a hell of a guess because that's just, in the just, South and that's a good guess. That's just, Beyonce. Just guess okay, Beyonce. Are you guys in agreement? Or you... Yes. From way downtown at the end of the shot clock, it was Beyonce, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> the shot clock was running out and you drilled it. How did you do that? You you always you can't go wrong when you guess Beyonce. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, final question. <laughs> now we should just end it there. I don't know how you're gonna beat that one. You went from that was geez, good. you're throwing out Prince, you're throwing out Taylor Swift. That was my that was my 70 yard Jalen Hurts pass that should that should have been. That was your long bomb. Yeah, that was your Hail Mary. 
Uh, final question. What two teams hold the record for the most Super Bowl losses? Oh, Bill's Vikings. Buffalo. Okay. Well, yep. You guys are going Bills and Vikings? Yeah. Hold on. Um, yeah. Yeah, Broncos, because I think, the, have only lost three. The Yeah, I was going to say the Cowboys have lost three, too. They've been there like eight times. Yeah, Cowboys, I think, have only lost three. Okay, so um, final answer. Bills, Vikings? Yeah, Bills, Vikings. I still Vikings. want to think it out. I don't, I don't want to impede the thinking process here. Bills, Vikings. That, that That's the answer. There's no doubt. It can be an old AFC team. Oh, now we, we've got some dissent in this no, team here. Think, uh, Buffalo, Buffalo's one of them, of course. You know, It's Bills, Vikings. Uh, okay, go ahead. All right. Bills, Vikings for the win. Okay, you guys are both wrong on both teams. How could you forget Broncos have lost five Super Bowls? Have They've they? lost five? They've lost four, uh, three with Elway, one before Elway, and then they lost the Manning one against Seattle. Oh, yeah, that's true. They've lost five. Wow. And the other team to lost five Super Bowls, the New England Patriots have lost five Super Bowls. Yeah, if you've been there that many times, you've They've you've been there like 11 many. times, yeah. Oh, wow. So I haven't, uh, I haven't I haven't updated the the old uh, Super Bowl bank. Well, I, I that's mean, pretty you, good. You shot your you shot your load with the Beyonce answer, so don't feel bad. Oh. All right. Yeah. I shot good, I shot the load with, I shot the load with Rihanna. Uh, but then, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that some other time. Is that why she was pregnant? Is that why she was already three months pregnant? <laughs> did you get Did you get Rihanna pregnant, Omar? Is that what <laughs> Is that what the big reveal was of Super yeah. Bowl? 50, what are that's, we at, that's what she talked about. She was revealing something at the Super Bowl. Carmona's baby. Yeah. Yeah. Hot mm-hmm. take. Hot take. Did, you, did you see, but you saw the, 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 the interview before, right? Yeah. That she was going to reveal, like it was going to be a, yeah. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. I was, I was expecting it to be like another like artist. And I, I yeah, we didn't have any cameos at all. And you know what? Yeah. I, I got it. That's my only complaint. You got there's you gotta bring Kanye out. At least, no, don't bring Kanye. But you gotta. Have- <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I gave this Super Bowl the subdued title. It just was like a subdued Super Bowl. Like everything was good, everything was fun. Oh, the commercials! Before I go to the awards, this was one of the more lackluster commercial years. I wrote down all the commercials Patrick, that, that stood was, out to me. It, it was the worst. Super Bowl in history because of commercials. There wasn't like a like a overly funny one. There wasn't like a there was like no a, like signature big... commercial. You know which one I thought was the best one was, was the, the one where Tra- where Travolta sings the song from Greece with those other two guys. Yeah, I was, like, I was like that was a fun commercial, and that was what we had to choose from. I thought the okay here were my commercials. You had Ben Affleck works at Dunkin' Donuts, the Fast and Furious preview. The Serena Williams gives the any given Sunday speech. Bradley Cooper works at T-Mobile. Pete Davidson eats mayonnaise. The Pringles uh, can get stuck on a hand. Creepy Death Bunny, and the weird Jesus commercial at the towards the end of the game. These were our commercials. All odd. All uh, odd. Pat, Pat had to say the weird Jesus commercial. That was weird. He... That was a weird commercial. Did you not think it was weird? Yeah, if, uh, if you haven't been to church in fucking 20 years, like you, you <laughs> kick it in here. it's weird. Um, <laughs> it was more civil rights-ish, I feel like. Um, <laughs> uh, fitting for the month that we're in, Black History Month. So I don't know if I... I, I, I think no, no, to... because that's what I thought. And uh, many of the images yeah. was a black guy choking another black guy. I know. I know. And it was... That's what I was like, what is this... Humans. Four. They went to the they went to the realm of we're all humans, you know, okay. and they're doing it on both sides. They even had some black people holding back white people. You know what I mean? Right, right. There was, I, I there was two cowboys that. fighting. It was I, I was just confusing you know, so, though. Yeah. And it says like Jesus loved your enemies. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I did not like it. No, I don't like it either. I don't like like <laughs> no, it just doesn't make any fucking sense. And I'm like, who's this for? Jesus? And Jesus taking out Omar, ads during the Super you're Bowl. You're gonna get a call from your godmother tomorrow, Omar. I, I <laughs> it was too much. It was too much. I didn't need to be I didn't need to be guilted while I was watching a game. 
at the very end while everybody's drunk at least give it to me at the beginning right wait right. hold on my mom's on the oh, my mom's on the phone again hello hello i hung up on her don't worry that was odd the only thing i liked about the commercials was like we didn't get that one sanctimonious bummer commercial this year like we didn't get any budweiser commercials why there was is no that Bud, there was a bud light commercial um <laughs> but that was remember that one year where there was a commercial and it said if you smoke weed you're funding terrorism do you remember that one <laughs> like like 20 years ago i watched that commercial you know i went to hippie college and I watched that commercial in my dorm room and people were pissed. They're like, Oh, that's bullshit. Can you believe like it was, it was a riot. Remember that one year was nuts. So we didn't get the sanctimonious commercial. The one I thought could have been great was the Serena Williams ones. And she botches the speech. It wasn't that good, but no, oh. no memorable commercials. Nothing, nothing stuck out. Bradley Cooper's hair looks weird to me. That's the only note I made is that Bradley Cooper's hair might be a wig. Right. But I don't know. <laughs> All right. Should we do the season finale round of the awards, gentlemen? Let's do it. The awards capping off the season in the NFL since the Super Bowl has ended. Award number one, the overbearing parent award. I have, I have two nominees. I have every single parent of a Philly fan tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I have the parents of Jackson Mahomes tonight. Because, you know, Patrick Mahomes' brother is a little notorious. So yeah. I think his parents are going to need to rein him in. And by the way, I wrote this down whether the Chiefs won or lost, too. That it had to be Jackson <laughs> Mahomes' parents. So who do you got for the overparenting award this week? I'm going to go with Mama Kelsey, but only because she's just so awesome. Uh, she just needs to be recognized for her parenting. That's good. D, who do you got yep. for overparenting award? Um, it's gotta be mama Kelsey too. She posted that picture early on, 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 uh, um, ins- uh, not Instagram on, um, Twitter of her. She's got the shoes. She's got one Eagle shoe. She's got one chief yeah, shoe. That's her cool. purse. Her purse is half and half. Uh, she, that, that was awesome for her to be able to experience that. Mm-hmm. Yep. She, she might've. I'll save it. I'll save it. Okay. Next award, hot take award. I have two. I said one already. Why don't Philadelphia, why don't you just blitz that whole last drive of Kansas City and maybe you can get the ball back a little quicker. But here's my hotter take. After the Eagles scored that touchdown to tie the game, they should have onside kicked it. There was five minutes left to go. Why don't you just onside (laughs) kick it? And if you get the ball back great you have a chance to win it and if you don't you give the the chiefs a short field and maybe you get the ball and they a little score quick, quick. yeah, yeah they, they, they get the quick. ball quicker yeah why not on side he's going for it like every every fourth down anyway yeah. this should have been a thought in the back of his head what do you got for a hot take d that was pretty good pat i didn't even think about that my hot take that's why i get paid the medium bucks <laughs> does that does my hot take have to be about this game uh, clearly, D, you do not you do not listen to this show. <laughs> Your hot take can be about anything. <laughs> I open it up to you. It can be so about. So I need to make sure. Absolutely anything. Do I need Do uh, I need to to pipe in a phone call from my mom again? <laughs> <laughs> See what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> See what she's up to. No, I cut her off. I, I put her her calls on mute. Don't worry. Oh, uh, my hot take is going to be um, Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets and he doesn't pick um I like that hot the take. Raiders the, the Raiders uh I think the Raiders are a little bit further than where they think they are yes they have their buddy but I think they're a little bit further than where they need to be who's and their buddy um Devontae Adams his buddy oh his uh um, Aaron Rodgers buddy yeah yeah and I think the Jets are in a better position to win things now um, the AFC East is not that great. Um, what about the Bills? Are, is, is that a hot take? The AFC East is not that great. Oh, that maybe that's take? your hot take. Okay, interesting. No, they're not. Um, who came out of there this year? The Bills. Yeah, they're not that hot. He's oh, they're beatable. Wow, I like how you said. Does this hot take have to be about 
football. And then you went straight into a football diatribe. No, about today's game. Oh, about today's game. So yeah. I would love to see Aaron Rodgers in New York. I think that'd be wild. Yeah. He stays, gotcha. he stays in green. He stays in green. You know, he doesn't oh. change his color. <laughs> Look at look at Omar's cheeks are getting very red. I think steam's coming out of his ears. You just mentioned Aaron Rodgers. You upset Omar. I, I, I get upset. I get upset when we talk about He's this. Not did you to the 49ers. Did, did you uh did you take any any reaction to Aaron Rodgers doing a retreat in a dark dark room this offseason before he makes He's his decision? He's a weirdo that drops dimes, so let him do what he needs to do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lots of hot takes from D. All right, you don't have to answer that question, hey, Omar. Go yeah. ahead, hot take. Uh, hold on. The other hot take is San Francisco is going to be without a quarterback because homeboy is not going to be done from Tom and John surgery in a year, <laughs> uh, in six months. Tom First and Jerry all, surgery. Like, I said a Tommy John surgery. You said Tom and John surgery. <laughs> uh, you know, just we're just going to perform a quick Ben and Jerry's on your knee. Rock Purdy. So they're going to be without a quarterback, and their guy that they drafted, he sucks, uh, that got injured this year. Um, what's his name, Omar? Uh, uh, Lance. Lance. Trey Lance. He sucks. He's not good. That's why, not why are answer. you upsetting Omar D? It's the I'm end of the know, season. I, it's I the finale. Why, why are you upsetting the man? I don't. I don't like Lance. I, I don't yeah. even like Lance. Yeah, like he, like, and then they're <laughs> going to be without this guy because he's going to be gone for a whole year, and um, you're not coming back in six months from Tommy John surgery. That's what you got, right? <laughs> it sounds like you're saying Tommy John surgery. <laughs> 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 San Francisco <laughs> without a quarterback. Yeah, that's that's true. And then they got to decide what they're going to do. Who's going to start? Who's going to compete for the job? And then Aaron Rodgers go, goes there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. All right, Omar, hot take. Hot take. Um, I, the Philadelphia Eagles will not be in the playoffs next year. Oh, Wow. Really think That's so? Why do, you, why do you think that? I don't know. I I, I, I may see some Super Bowl. I, I I could see some Super Bowl letdown with them, um, and I think they're gonna they're 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 in line to uh, lose some. I think some of their players, their key players, and coordinators getting and coordinators are going to be targeted, um, and, and so I could see a, a a huge shift there. So I would not be surprised. That Super Bowl. This. That Super Bowl year following for the losing team is always such a 50-50 shot whether they right. bounce back or they they take a step back. And let me tell you that. this, the NFC East hasn't had a repeat winner in probably close to 20 years, maybe a little bit more. Uh, maybe, and I think they're at, actually on that 20 year mark. Next award, the cringe worthy award. This one's my favorite <clears throat> of the week. Cringe worthy award, I got a lot of nominees. I got number one, the cringe worthy award, Mahomes' ankle. Bradley Cooper's weird hair. I don't know if you saw him in the luxury box, but he's in the Philadelphia Eagles luxury box. It looks like he's wearing a wig. Philadelphia's Eagles D in the entire second half. And then lastly, Excuse Andy Reid's post-game interview where he threatened to kiss Tom Rinaldi is another cringe word <laughs> nominee. That. Go back and watch it. It's pretty funny. Like, I've never seen Andy Reid be funny like that. It was pretty good. So those are my cringe-worthy nominees. Do you have one of those or do you have your own? Go ahead, Omar. Start us off. Crit, uh, cringe really. I, I don't. You know, I'm not gonna. Uh, for this week, uh, yeah. You know what? Cringe worthy. Um, M Michael Irvin, a, a BS, a BS <laughs> allegation. It looks like. Oh yeah, and, that was a good, good and, week and, leading up story. Yeah. And we're just, and you know, it's just, you know, every time now somebody <laughs> somebody makes a a stupid accusation, it you know, it costs people, and you know, it really hurts people, and this is this is going too far. There's the yeah. Omar I know. There's the defense lawyer I know, Omar yeah, Kermit. That, that's ridiculous. You know, and it was yeah. such a BS accusation that, it, it, you know, the the fact that his 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 job was even called into question and he had to be suspended or you know. A, yeah, they're they're like that. That was too I'm quick for them to do that. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, they very let quick. him do his thing. Yeah, they, they yeah. should have done that. He was yeah, guilty before you. he was innocent. Right. I'm with you. Uh, what about you, D? Cringeworthy yeah. award. Fucking okay. The Eagles coach crying like he's like <laughs> it was some kind of shocking, um, like it was a Whitney Houston, you know, you know, oh. Super Bowl, uh, you know, a, a national anthem. 
Get you out of here. You think he faked it? What are you saying? I mean, who was who was the uh, um, the guy from the Broncos who who was crying like that? I don't uh, know his name, back. but yeah, I saw that. Uh, no, Sean, no Sean Moreno. Ah. Yes, yes, Moreno, um, crying like like huge crocodile tears, like huge, right? Like you know, um, that yeah, was Monte, that's pretty, big, big, big surprise. A cowboy hating uh, hating in on a. Uh, listen, a special moment. listen, I, I, I've been so good all day and I haven't said this, but fuck the fucking what? Eagles. Fuck them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody cares about their winning. They, they're at the Super Bowl. Who cares? They're shitty. They still have one Super Bowl. And I'm glad it went down the way it went down. And it, it's just, you're, it's, you're... It, it, I'm going to go through this whole offseason feeling good because I don't have to listen to these punk ass Eagle fans. You know, you're a class act. I I apologize. You know, (laughs) I apologize. Demont is gonna get a call from my mom later. If you feel, uh, you know, insulted or disrespected, that's a hundred percent your fault. (laughs) If there's anything we can take from this pod, it's that Demont blames you, the viewer. (laughs) Oh, I have a quick thought. I thought of this while I was prepping my notes for today. What do you think about this? Isn't it time? For a movie, actors, script, everything of the 1992 Dallas Cowboys championship team. So think about it. We have like, you know, like, remember the um, the Philadelphia Eagle one, Invincible? <laughs> we have that one. Remember that we have the Kurt Warner story? Like, we have these good NFL stories. Isn't it enough time passed where we could get actors to play Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones? Because remember, at the time... They were underdogs. Like they had come through the one in 15 season. Oh, this was the old 70s Cowboys. They stink now. Wouldn't it be great to have a movie about that first Super Bowl run and we could call it The Boys? <laughs> All right. And, uh, <laughs> and I already have an idea for who could play Troy Aikman. We could have that guy mm. who played Elvis in the movie. Um, I already forgot his name. But that guy looks like Troy Aikman. He could get buff, he could be one of these like body transformation things. Where the guy gets buff and he could play Troy Aikman. What do you think? Isn't it time for a nostalgia '90s movie about the Dallas Cowboys? That'd be something else. Who would you cast <laughs> as? Who would you cast as Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith and Jimmy Johnson? I would give C.D. Lamb an acting opportunity and let Ooh. him play Michael Irvin. Wow, interesting. You would, huh? Maybe like like any given Sunday, where Lawrence Taylor is a is a role in the in the movie type of thing. Wow, that'd be good. <laughs> I wouldn't mind uh, seeing that. I would give um oh, I forget his name. Uh he's from Saturday Night Live, the one that got into the uh the car accident. Tracy um, Morgan? I'd give Tracy Morgan the, the spot. Of who? But Michael Irvin. Michael definitely... Irvin. That's a good one. <laughs> That's insane. Who else? <laughs> I got two ideas for hey, Jimmy Johnson. But, but 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 hear me out. Hear me out. All right. The Dallas Cowboys sell. And we're over here talking about the Dallas. That, this is why you're not getting any kind of row from this guy over here, uh, Omar. He's like, why are we talking about the Dallas fucking Cowboys? <laughs> Because okay. there's no storylines for the with the 49ers. Nobody gives a fuck about them. So just to answer that question, but go ahead, Pat. All right. Nobody asked a... that question. I will. Yeah, no I will. Asked that. Don't... yeah I, I will like to interject. Nobody asked that question, Diamante. <laughs> Mania. <laughs> You're two steps away from asking yourself your own questions and answering them. Uh, okay. I have two ideas for Jimmy Johnson. I have. A good Sunday. I have uh, Brian Cranston. Hmm? Okay, or, like or Will Ferrell for the role of Jimmy Johnson. Okay. I think this will be a great idea for a movie. Okay. I think it's time for 90s nostalgia. All right, I got way off track there. It's Would you rather Friday Night Lights, PAT is what it's called. But they don't play on Fridays. What are you talking about? Plus, that's already a movie. <laughs> D, stop it, D. I'm, I'm, all right, I'm cutting all this out. All right, Would You Rather... <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather, right now, the Super Bowl just ended, would you rather go with the Eagles for next year or the Chiefs for next year? Great question. Omar, go ahead. Start us off. Chiefs. They're my... <laughs> Chiefs are more like... Choking Chiefs your own are... self up. 
Chiefs are more likely to go back to the big game than the Eagles are next year. Yep. I'm in, I'm inclined to agree with you. How about you, D? Are you going Chiefs also? Chiefs because of the uh, five hundred million dollar man. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes. You know, um, that's that's the reason why I see them there. Uh, you've got to have a quarterback. This is a quarterback driven league. He's the best of the best. I have more faith in in him. And, and he surprised me this year, by the way, by not having Tyreek Hill and still. That's Dude, huge. What he did. We, like, we, I thought I thought that was going to hurt him. We wrote him off. People wrote him yes. off. I thought that was really going to hurt him, and he showed us that he's that quarterback that makes everybody else good. Not saying Terry Kill's not good because he's he made a homeboy from uh, he he made two, uh, Ty, uh, Tagalova whatever his name is. He made him look like an all star this year. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll spoil one of my final questions. How pissed is Tyreek Hill tonight? Is he when he's like, shit, I should have stayed? Or she's like, well, no. you know, I wanted the money. Like, uh, how mad is he a, right that's now? A, that's a, that's he a, took a, the money. That's a business decision. Okay, yeah, so he's he not took mad. the money. He has, to feel, he has to be comfortable with what he made. Can I make the case for the Eagles next year? Sure. Draft picks, young quarterback, young coach, and beyond the second half, they were pretty damn sharp on offense. Everything almost, I think they punted once. If, if Jalen Hurts doesn't do that silly fumble where he drops the ball, essentially, the Chiefs have to try and tie the game, not win the game. And I think they really grow from this loss. If there's one thing that we know is Jalen Hurts is not affected by any emotions whatsoever. So he's going to come right back. I'm going to make the case for the Eagles are coming back next year. Super strong. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Would you rather? I'll go for the Eagles to to counter your Chiefs point. Okay. And they should have onside kicked that one time. All right. The you've never seen me upset award. The Ethan Hunt Tom Cruise movie award. Of course, it's open up to all movies now. I got two nominees. One is Tom Cruise movie Rain Man for this week. We had a lot of just slow, steady burn all movie long, and the ending. Subdued ending to Rain okay. Man, where Dustin Hoffman just puts his head on Tom Cruise's head, and the movie kind of just ends. Okay. And then my non-Tom Cruise movie, <laughs> I went with, I went with Pulp Fiction. Just a lot of like, kind of like, what was that scene? Why did they run the ball? Was that a penalty? Was that a catch? Like a lot of like, you know, you ask these questions during Pulp Fiction, the whole time, and then Pulp Fiction just ends, and you're like, oh, are we at the beginning, and you don't really know. And that's how this game was. Like, oh, I guess it just ended. The Chiefs won, and Andy Reid wants to kiss Tom Rinaldi. Yep. Those are my two movies. So what do you got, Omar? Did you go Tom Cruise or did you go? I'll out go of, with the Tom Cruise uh, Maverick. The, uh, pa Patrick Mahomes is the Maverick. He's, he's, oh, he's, good. He's, he's the top. He's the top guy. He's going to be around. He's going to have this long, distinguished career. He's, he's going to threaten Tom Brady at some point. I'm not, he's not there yet. I, I know how much you love him, Diamante. He's not there yet, but he has the potential. Just like Kobe had the potential to and, and made the best, I thought the best effort anyone could make being better than, you know, catching Michael Jordan. Um, but th there's, yeah, he, he's, yeah. Mahomes is going to make a run at it. All due respect to Kobe. He was a great player, rest in peace, but he was never close to Jordan. I'm not saying he uh, was, I mean, maybe not even close because who was? Yeah, but yeah. I, I, but he made he made an attempt, and I think you gotta yeah. respect his attempt at it. Yeah. Okay. But I I feel like with uh, Mahomes, you feel like he can do it, and I never felt like that with Kobe. So, um, I think that's the difference here. He's he's he is he's there, and and I saw some reports. They said that even if he if if he didn't win any more Super Bowls, he makes a he makes a case for being already in in the Hall of Fame at this oh, at this a, age. No. He's a hall. He's a hall of famer. Yeah. Tonight he's yeah, a hall of no. famer. He's mm -hmm. a hall of famer. He can he can That's quit crazy. tomorrow. He get he can quit tomorrow, and he's getting a gold jacket. Yeah, hundred percent. Just to be clear, Omar, did you nominate Top Gun Maverick or the original Top Gun? Because you know this is important stuff. The 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 the, 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 the Top Gun Maverick, the the second ah. movie. He's just the okay. Best. Okay, very good. All right, D, what's your movie? Uh, I think those are all good ones right there. You guys have, hit him right on the head. <laughs> you don't have a movie. Have you ever seen, my, have my you ever movie, seen Rain my, Man? 
Patrick, I, I, at, know, at, mid, at midnight for him, he doesn't have a movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it reminds me, it reminds me of my movie, you know, when I first, you know, uh, got my chance to do something uh, spectacular. It was very anticlimactic, you know? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's how this, this, this game was. Final award. Who won the week? I have two nominees. I have YouTube won the week. I don't know if you saw all the commercial for YouTube TV before the Super Bowl. YouTube is ready. YouTube is ready for the oh, NFL. And, and next I'm year. loving, I'm loving YouTube TV here in El Paso. I think YouTube wow. won the week. And also just back to the game. I think Andy Reid wins this week. I think this is Andy Reid's Super Bowl. To be honest, I think he put together the game plan, the players mm -hmm. never wavered through all the injuries. So I give my who won the week award to I go Andy Reid. Not to mention former Philadelphia coach too. And, and yeah. although I don't have I don't have uh, high expectations for the team, I think the player that won the week uh, is Jalen Jalen Hurts. I, I mean, I, really, yeah, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he he, okay. he 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 balled and 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 um, you know, last time he was on a stage this big, uh, he was being benched for you know uh, Tua. And for him to come back and have the, the start to his career, he's having hats off to Jalen Hurts. Interesting pick. D, who won the week? Um, I think... I think a few people won, you know, this weekend. Uh, first starting off with this being the first time we've had two black quarterbacks uh, in, in, uh, in the Super Bowl, I think, uh, all kids of, 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 of the minority, you know, portion of society, um, can appreciate that. I'm not just going to say blacks. Uh, I think all of them. Um, so I think, I think, I think minorities won this weekend, of course, it's being black history month. Um, I think Texas football, uh, won this Texas weekend football. as well. Uh, did we had did Jesus Texas win the week also? <laughs> we had two Texas quarterbacks, you know, uh, um, high, Texas high school quarterbacks in it. Not only are they black, but they both came from Texas. Um, and, and, and football fans, period. You know, it's going to be a fun off season. This is why this is the greatest sport on earth. It doesn't matter if you're not a fan. Uh, of these, uh, uh, if you, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're not a fan of these teams. You enjoyed this weekend. You enjoy Super Bowl. Uh, you enjoy the festivities that lead up to it. The, the, the cookouts, the all that excitement, the little parties that happen. Uh, you enjoy staying up at midnight. Uh, you know, talking about this. I mean, it's just. It, Hold on, it, let me give you some graduation Super Bowl. music. It's a Super Bowl. <laughs> I've got to go. go out. I've got to go out with my. Uh, valedictorian speech you know <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a few i'm a few of these in <laughs> i'm tempted to just let you keep going <laughs> wow <laughs> he's holding up his glass he's pointing for those just listening he's pointing to his balls <laughs> all right that right. leads us to the final sunday night questions super bowl edition leading into Next year editions. I got five of them. Are you guys ready? We're going to go rapid fire. Here we go. All right. Our music is playing. Question number one. Start with you, Omar. Who is more angry sitting at home watching this game? Josh Allen or Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow. He expects to be there every year. That's the kind of mentality he has. He, he hates losing. What about you, D? Who has the regression year next year? Josh Allen or Joe Burrow? Um, Joe Burrow, he hasn't had a regression year, so it's it, it, the odds are in his favor to have one of those. Ooh, harsh. Next question. He's good. He's good. What would you like to see from Tom Brady next year? What capacity? What do you want him to do? What's your <laughs> hopes for Tom Brady, D? Omar, no, nah, let Omar answer that first. Oh, he's he's deferring to the second half. All right, go ahead, Omar. Uh, I'd like to see him on a on a on a year long vacation. What? But he's contracted to Fox. You don't want him to do something? No. Just, just <laughs> Why do you step. hate Tom Brady? No, I'm not saying I hate him. Just take a step back. You've earned it. Oh, okay. All right, D. What do you want to see from Tom Brady next year? 
I want to see him. I want to see him take a step back and just be um, the Joe Namath of his time and go out there and he's he's single. He's he's ready to mingle. He's he's done. He's the oh, so you want Playboy Tom Brady? I want, I want Playboy T. You oh, I'd like Playboy to. I'd watch T. that show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind him doing something like a Manning cast type of thing. Uh, on a weekly basis. Yeah. I don't see him as a studio guy. I don't see him doing interviews. He, he has a podcast already. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The one with Jim Gray or his own? His own. Oh, I have it's, to listen But to it's that. with a couple of people as well. Yeah. Oh, I have to I listen to that it. one. Yeah. All right. Next question. Will either of you watch any USFL or XL, XFL games? Omar no, says no. I take a break. Gosh, no. Yeah, yeah, gosh, no. As much as I like to watch football, like I need a little football break. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm sure I'm gonna dip in and watch a, a little bit, but yeah, I, I need a little break. And we got football. baseball season coming up. We got basketball. The end of basketball season. Yeah, there's Mark sports Manning. going on. Yeah. It's pretty degenerate football fan who watches those games. All right, and final question. It's a big one. Realistically, how many more years can Mahomes play? And how many more Super Bowls can he win? All right, Omar, start us off. He, he can play the way he plays, which is more physical than Tom Brady, Eli Manning, Drew Brees. I, I think he can play top, you know, some pretty good football for another nine years. Um, uh, Super Bowl wins? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, how many? And maybe, I'd say it, at least two more. Okay, so you say he gets two more. Say he gets two more. That means four total Super Bowls. That puts him in the argument. Sure. Yeah. All right, D, how many years? How many Super Bowls? I I think he could go another 10 years the way he's playing. He's he's a young guy. This is barely, what, year six for him? Um, So 16's not out of the question. Um, I think he's a... He's physic- He's not as physical as you guys are saying. He just runs more. Uh, but I think he's just as elusive as Aaron Rodgers. I think he could play a long career like him, uh, but amongst the GOAT, GOAT status. So 10 years, I would say three Super Bowls. Let's give him three. I went with he can play 10 years. I'm with you, D. And if he keeps on this average of winning a Super Bowl every other year, I'm going to go four wins. I'd say he can get four more Super Bowl wins, putting him at six, putting him right up there with the Tom Brady conversation greatest ever. Just depends on those those six, like how are those wins are. Does he have the big comeback? Does he have the year where he wins it with like if, no if tools? You're, if you're talking about that many more Super Bowls, uh, you, 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 you have to depend on, like the franchise has to buy in completely, which means, What's the succession plan if Andy Reid is going to retire anytime right. soon? That's a good question. Um, you know what? What sort of you know? There was it was the Patriot way, and that's what got a lot of Super Bowls. Is there is there now a Chiefs way? I think also, big picture, say he gets four wins or maybe three wins, and we're arguing about greatest ever. Can he put together that one undefeated season? And then we and then we got to be like, okay, shit. Now we got to put him in the Tom Brady zone. So I went ten years. Four Super Bowls, gentlemen. So that's my pick. That was the season finale of the Sunday Night Talk, guys. We did it. That was 2022-2023 year. Diamante Williams, Omar Carmona. That does it for the season. Thank you, everybody. See you next year. See you next year. That is it. That is the show. That is the season of the Sunday Night Talk. The Super Bowl. Wow. What a game. I want to thank Diamante Williams. I want to thank Omar Carmona for joining me all season long. We did it. We discussed every single football Sunday and beyond. We gave out awards. We had talks. And occasionally, we discussed football. How did you enjoy the Super Bowl? Well, even though it's the last show of the season, there is more stuff up on the channel. Not to mention, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Click it on YouTube. I have stand-up clips on there. I have interviews on there. And I have a movie breakdown podcast called Opening Scenes going up very shortly as well. Not to mention, I have some YouTube shorts up there as well of my stand-up. So give it a listen. Even though the season is over, there's more stuff on the channel. 
So I hope you enjoyed the NFL. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. I hope you're looking forward to next year already because there's a lot to discuss. Well, that's what we do in the Sunday Night Talk. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and have a very, very good offseason.